Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this special video to celebrate, alhamdulillah, uh, Saira and my uh, 20th wedding anniversary. Um, alhamdulillah, shukrullah. We thought we'd release it on Valentine's Day because it's just good timing. Um, we wanted to give special uh, call out and thanks to uh, Sidi Muhammad Isawaili and Ustada Fatima Doyle, who are dear friends of ours. Uh, they were at our wedding 20 years ago and they've been dear advisors and counselors all this time. So big thanks to you. We wouldn't have... Uh, got this far without your help and support, mashallah. And um, I wanted to say at the outset that, look, we are not the perfect couple. We um, are not, uh, we, don't, we have not had a marriage without bumpy, it's been a bumpy ride. And we want to share this, like those of you, you might have a brilliant marriage, your marriage might be way better than ours. You might have a marriage which is on the rocks, right? Whatever stage you are, we're hoping that these seven principles we're gonna share, these are seven principles which we've worked on um, as people who um, study the deen, uh, as I'm a productivity and high performance coach myself. And we felt that these seven things we're gonna share with you, they've really helped us. We felt like if we didn't have these seven principles, we would not have got as far as we are. We would not have survived. And they really helped our marriage stay young and fresh. And Alhamdulillah, we can say, despite it being 20 years, we, we still alhamdulillah, love each other so much. We still feel like best friends. And we're still, we're looking forward to the next 20 years, inshallah, Allah gives us life. So let's go straight into it. Number one, is having a shared vision, right? Um, and so I remember when we first got married, you know, we were both young, we were idealistic. And um, if you remember, we talked about going to Syria and studying sacred knowledge. And we had that vision. We wanted to study sacred knowledge together. We wanted the deen to be a priority. We wanted to study with Shayuk. Um, and we wanted to start a family, right? So having the same uh, vision, the same goals, having the same understanding of the deen, this is number one. It's really important you have the same journey and you have the same goals together. And this includes things like where you're going to live, uh, are, are your parents going to live with you, um, uh, what job you're going to have, you know, uh, how much is a wife going to work. Having a shared vision and agreeing uh, on all these big decisions, this is this is the ultimate uh, starting point for us. Is there anything you want to say about vision and having a shared goal? Yeah, I think um, going back, I was 19 to so I was 20 um it feels strange saying that <laughs> subhanallah but um we were both really passionate about the deen that was our main um drive that's what and connected us so um i think that's the most um important thing that you keep on revisiting that and mm -hmm. alhamdulillah we, we, that, that's what we we always do in in, in different ways uh, we're always at attending things keeping in touch with ulama um, listening to things that inspire us um, with regards to the deen. So always remembering that vision that ultimately we're, we're going to Allah. And this is a means to get closer to Allah. We're, 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 we're a team and we're going to support each other and help each other every single step of the way. Fantastic. Um, number two, um, and I think this is really, really key. This, this sums it all up. Um, being best friends and romantic lovers, right? Uh, Sarah squirmed a bit when I said the <laughs> second part, but let's just do the first bit, which is easier, right? So your wife should be your best friend. Your husband should be your best friend. Now, it sounds simple, right? But I remember when we, before we got married, we, we both had active social circles. I had dozens of friends at uni. You, you were really popular. And when we got married, it sounds a bit like cruel, but like both, are, like, you know, I remember like <laughs> my social life just stopped overnight, right? And, and we, you know, uh, we, it's not like we cut off ties, but suddenly, you know, I had someone who's much more important and I was much more interested in spending time with than anyone else, right? And that's what a best friend is, right? Your best friend is someone you want to spend time with, you want to joke around with, you want to have a laugh, you want to go to the cinema, you want to go to a meal with, right? Yeah. That's what a best friend's about. And if you've if you don't feel like that with your spouse right now, then that's a that's a that's a sign that maybe that's something you need to cultivate and develop. Yeah. Um, so, like Tushar works from home, and because I know he's up there, he's just upstairs in the city. I can't help but just check in regularly. And if um, if I have a, have a day when I'm away from him all day, let him I'm out, or he's in meetings all day, it feels strange because I'm so used to just touching base with him, just checking he's okay have a little cup of tea together. Right, and um, how many times have we um, interrupted my work day to kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, have a, an extra break or an extra meal or something, but uh, that's what best friends do. So, and, and then the romantic lovers thing, I, the reason why I put that in is that, look, come on, we all know that, you know, from the, the, the last generation, there's been a bit of trauma going from the culture of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Middle East, wherever it is, and now the 20th century culture in the West. 
right? Now, one good thing which we thank Hollywood for, maybe Bollywood a little bit, right, is that they have taught us a little bit about romance. And it's important, right? Because what we don't want is this, you know, that this stereotypical, you know, the man who's out there working, very stern, right? And then the, the doormat wife is tied to the kitchen sink. And then, you know, there's no love in the marriage. Now, those marriages, we all know, they don't work. They end up in divorce or despair, right? And the remedy to that is that marriage is about love romantic love right which you know you see in the movies and you see in those silly bollywood sequences the point is there's a there's a truth in that and 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 the best proof is a sunnah if you look at the prophet Islam, the way he was with Khadijah, the way he was with aisha these just these these two marriages if you just think about all the hadiths we know about it, it it's, it's so intimate it's so beautiful they spent time with each other they supported each other they, they were, laughed together they laughed they raced Enjoyed together each other's remember the race when we read about the hadith about the prophet Islam, racing Raisha two times and we did the same thing and we, we yeah, raced we don't talk about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm sure i won both but anyway no no i won the first one <laughs> did you okay yeah. right. so so you know this is part of it so making sure you inject romance and love into mm. the marriage i just wanted to add once you have children obviously you can feel it can feel awkward in front of children to be mm. affectionate but it's important that they see yeah. a real example of touching, hugging, and being um, close. So with our son Murad, we regularly hug, and he'll come in he'll and join, jump in join and us to join. Yeah, yeah. for a family hug. Yeah. And um, I, I think it's important he sees that. Unfortunately, I, I didn't see that growing up, and I, I don't think you did no, either, right? No, and so um, I, I don't want to give that example to Murad. But it's yeah. important that he's able to do that. Um, and have a, a, like a nice healthy balance in, in that aspect. I mean, it seems a no-brainer. Marriage is about love. But when you look at the reality of many marriages where they're not working, love, and, and sometimes we do this, we get our culture, we kind of think of marriage too much as a roles and responsibility. Remember all that, yes, the wife has to cook and clean or the husband has to work. And we remember all those parts, but we forget, hold on, love is what binds you together. And not just love as in, yes, I love, and this is why one of the books we recommend is The Five Love Languages by Gary yeah. Chapman. So you Brilliant. understand like how to manifest that love. Different people experience love in different ways. So we don't have time to go into that, but make sure you have romantic love in the marriage as well. Gifts, chocolates, flowers, and physical, romantic breaks. Physical, and there's also words. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you need to hear um, nice things. Yeah. Girls, I mean, women, <laughs> guys, you have to say it. Right? You have to tell them. <laughs> you let them. Don't assume they know. Don't assume that just all the money and the things you buy. It's not enough. Okay, uh, number three. This is a big one. Rituals, right? <laughs> so we have three levels. Daily, weekly, and, um, and you know, monthly or, or, or annually, right? So daily, you have to, you know, you need to have, um, uh, you know, ro um, what do we call it? Couple time, right? Couple time every single day. And, and most of our marriage, we've had that time, it's, yeah, and it's evolved. We used to uh, play Scrabble together, then it became reading, we read so many novels. You know, now it's tense, we, we watch a lot of movies together, right? because we've got, now that we have children, it's, it's harder to read books, right? You, you, you just need to space out sometimes. Right? <laughs> okay, so, so, Especially <laughs> after a day with Murat. Yeah. So the point is, you have to have that couple time every <laughs> single day. And this is why the uh, ritual is put the kids to bed, right? Get in that habit, putting them to sleep. And no matter, I mean, look, sometimes, I remember when Murad was young, he would sleep at seven o'clock. Now, sometimes nine, 10. But no matter what time he sleeps, we will always have at least an hour together, quality time. It's just us, right? Thank yeah, you. sorry, I just wanted to add, um, everyone's situation is different and depends on your work routine. Sometimes, some I'm actually not working. I'm, I only, I, I, I don't do, I, I have like a part-time job. It's only a few hours a week. So I have a lot more time for the, for the home, but I can imagine there's women working. Um, and so if you can't have um, quality time where you're just like after the kids have gone to bed um, every day, if you can't do that, mm. please ensure like the family meal together at least, so where you're all sitting and having something you're sharing together. We used to do it after work, didn't we? Remember when, I was, when we were in Kuwait, I'd come back and then our time Murad would have a nap. So we would have that time in the afternoon and then I knew when Sarah put Murad to sleep, I wouldn't see her, right? Because so, I used to also fall, fall asleep, asleep because yeah. I was so tired. Yeah. So, so that's a daily, then weekly, uh, and this is something which we've not, we've not always been consistent with, but the last few years we really have, especially when family have moved into the home, having that weekly date night or date day. It doesn't have to be in the night, right? We, we, our date is really in the daytime when Murad's at school, right? So it used to be date night, but then, you know, it, it depends on circumstance. So okay. having a date time where, you know, go to the cinema or have a meal, just you, and, and, and look, when I, with my clients, so many of them ask them, when's the last time, and I'm gonna ask you watching this, when's the last time you went on a date night or a date time, just you and your wife, you and your husband, when's the last time you did that? And how regular is that? Because that really 
uh, helps manage that. Non-Muslims, even the busiest executives, we know that that's one sacred appointment they keep every single week. And, and it's more- really fun. It's really exciting. Yeah. Um, just from a you know, like a woman's perspective, I obviously Tushar is a breadwinner. He takes care of everything. But on the date night, it's extra special. Um, and we, we can go anywhere we want, eat out and just have fun. And I, I feel pampered. Um, my mother-in-law, Tushar's mom, is staying with us right now. So I enjoy it even more because we get away from the home, away from um, just normal, just homely things and have quality time together. Um, and we, we can like sometimes we, we play stuff um, or go for a walk. Crazy um, course, yeah. yeah, or the cinemas and just something fun, something exciting. Um, Even we, squash, we've had squash back into me to do yeah, that again, don't we? Yeah, we'll start yeah, that, yeah. inshallah. Um, so yeah, date night is is crucial. Sorry, just I want to mention um, again. Tisha mentioned date day. So often couples are free on the weekend, but it's a hard time to go out because the children are home because they're not at school. So because Tisha is an entrepreneur, we managed to change his work hours. So he takes Monday off, mm-hmm. and Murad's out at his um, uh, education center in the on the Monday daytime, and that's when we were able to go out without having to you know worry about sorting out childcare. He's already in a good a safe like happy place yeah. and then we can go out and have some quality time together so do think outside the box and we'll come um, to that on priority okay. yeah, yeah. yeah definitely we'll link to that and finally on, 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 the, on the ritual front um regular holidays right so we've just come back on the, the 20th anniversary you know we, uh, we recommend this every anniversary just go on a holiday right and so we've done that even though ours is in the winter right? you know late january we've always uh, it's you know, been really nice sometimes right? yeah when it's been snowing yeah yeah um, in england it's been, been snow it's been nice. or we try to go out this way for 20th we wanted to go sun sea sun we went to shama Sh- Sh- but it's not just once a year so every few months right a few times a year at least we will try to organize a holiday. And, and it's not just us, this will be the family, right? It will be the family. Um, and we took our in-laws as well. We took our in-laws recently. once. And when we went on Hajj, and we took the whole family, right? Mm-hmm. So the point is having a holiday, a shared experience. Because look, at the end of the day, when you look back in your life, what do you remember? It's, it's those memories, right? And so you want to create those amazing memories. And there's nothing like a holiday to create those memories, alhamdulillah. So yeah, having regular holidays, which you look forward to, the whole family look forward to, it really re-energizes everything. And again, sorry, I just wanted to add, there's, there's people here listening to this, they've got big families. Mm-hmm. And so it might not be feasible to go away um, somewhere far or um, exotic or expensive. Mm-hmm. So there's there's different ways to do it. You know, you can check out Groupon, they have mm-hmm. like deals. Um, even trips, Travel Lodge mm-hmm. have, um, sometimes they have deals, 10, 15 pounds a night. Mm-hmm. And you can- I think that was 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, okay, let's, let's <laughs> yeah. be optimistic. Yeah, yeah. And, and day trips, you have micro trips, right? Micro trips, yeah, day, day trips. Trip. You can go somewhere for the day. It doesn't have to be a big expensive thing. Like we're so lucky here in England, just an hour's drive away, you, you come into the countryside mm-hmm. so you can just drive off and there's nice um, country parks and just it's, it's just refreshing getting away uh, with the children if you can um, and um, take a picnic if you don't want to be eating out it's just that you do something together and it's something fun and exciting that you look forward to fantastic number four right so now the first three were very positive very inspiring now we're going to get through some kind of icky issues right so number four is really important resolving conflict one of the first things uh, uh, Ustada Fatima uh, taught us, may Allah preserve her, um, was that every marriage, right, you ha- you're going to get conflict. Whenever you live together with anyone, right, you're going to have conflict. And marriage is, is, is really, and, and you know, trust me, we argue a lot. Even before we started, I was calling, I'm like, hurry up, we're late, you know, right? So you're going to always argue. Now, now, there's one, this is just one thing I want to, if there's nothing you remember from this, this one thing is going to really help you. So we were taught early on in a marriage by Ustada Fatima that, listen, Everyone has conflict, there's no problem, right? Um, but if you're gonna have conflict, you could, a marriage can survive, and then any relationship can survive, if you have this golden ratio, and this has been researched, and it is one to five. For every one negative experience you have, as long as you've got five kind of positive things to buffer that, then you're going to be fine, inshallah. You're yeah. going to survive. And if you look at it, if you look at the other thing, we talk about those rituals, we've got those rituals in place. If you've got, uh, uh, you know, you, you've got your, your best friends, your romantic lovers. If you think about it, that's going to create lots and lots of positivity. So yeah. if you argue, like if you were as like a, a type person like me and Simon, we're both got very, very opinionated, strong views, very, right? And so we, we have lots of arguments. We disagree on lots of things. But alhamdulillah, because we know, oh, look, tonight we're going to be having fun or uh, we've got a holiday coming up, right? That just, it kind of like, it, you, 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 you forget the bad times, right? It, it, it's just part of the cycle. And so that ratio is so important. And if you think about failed marriages, 
what tends to happen? They have all this negative energy, right? All this, like, they're not enjoying their life. They're just, you know, they're, they're arguing all the time. And they don't actually have rituals. They don't actually have positive moments together. Their ratio is like five to one the other way around. And so therefore the marriage is fair. Yeah, I just want to be honest here. You know, um, there has there have been times, dark times in our mm, marriage yeah. where I would say it was the other way around. So mm. even though we are both um, trying to be positive, trying to be optimistic, there were difficult times, especially after having Murad. Yeah. He came after 15 years of um, marriage, like the, no child for 15 years. And then having a baby, it was, it was really tough. Because it, we've had some challenging times. But um, and your illness when you go through illness, yeah. and I had to kind of take over, and, and you know, which I always had this vision of the man, you know, stereotypically working, and she'll do the nappies and all that. And so when Sarah was really ill, and then I had to take over everything there and take off time work, it was really, really challenging. Yeah, but um, the important thing to remember is uh, communication. So you're mm -hmm. you're talking, you're discussing with each other what's going on. You're not hiding things, and you're not keeping it um quiet just because you're trying to be nice and you're just going to put up with it um and see how long you can go um i think it's important to be um transparent and open with each other so we've never had any secrets between each other right so yeah. anything i've not liked right which which bugs me sarah knows about it anything which she doesn't like she tells me straight away right <laughs> and so i'm like very very rarely we could count on the, on our hand the number of nights where we've gone to sleep not resolving an argument we've had like we just get too we just we need to resolve it there yeah. and then and the opposite of that where some of my clients I've, I've 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 coached people where they've not told their wife or they've not told their husband and it's something bitter is growing inside and it's sometimes it's quite a major issue and they've not even spoken about it you can't assume the other person knows and even if they do know that you, you don't know they don't know how you feel about it if you don't tell them then don't blame them for not solving it right so you have to anything you're not happy about talk about it yeah and there's some things which can change and there's some things which can't change but we've got to live with it right there's some aspects of each other's personality which which we can't change we've had to learn, you know the, the classic kind of you know did they put the toilet lid down or up or the the, the toothpaste did they squeeze it? you know these kind of funny things which in, in culture and comedy we talk about but this is about like there's some things which you got to let go but there are other things which you don't want to let go and you've got to work at work a yeah. solution on. i just wanted to also add with regards to communication it's hard sometimes we all not very expressive or you're not used to doing that and that's where you have to be brave and get help if you need to so even though me and Tisha are quite we're expressive and you'd think we'd just be able to talk it out we've not been able to solve all our problems yeah. like that we've actually had to actively seek help from family from friends and then actual professional help as yeah. well yeah. at yeah. different stages in yeah. the marriage yeah. Yeah. even even if there's a like for example a classic thing is many happens to many people is like you know like said, 10 years you might have had over 10 years, it took, it took before we could have a child. So we had to get medical help. You know, we had to seek consultants. And again, uh, we regret not doing that sooner, right? But yeah. Alhamdulillah, we did. Oh, that's a reminder. So time, Sorry, the time, time is important for time management, helps with kids, helps with everything, right? Just okay, we'll, um, we'll give it a few more minutes. A few more minutes, right? But uh, yeah, seek help. Um, don't be shy. Um, have a support network, family, friends, and then get expert help if you need it. Um, next, uh, number five, and this is a big one, honoring family. Right now, when you marry someone, you marry the family, you marry into the family. And this is a really complex issue, right? This is something which, you know, we could do a whole webinar just about that topic. But the principle I want you to remember, there's a balance between um, honoring your wife or your husband and making sure that uh, they have their rights fulfilled and you, and you maintain that sacred uh, uh, relationship. And then the, uh, and the balance between honoring your parents and, and, and uh, making sure that you know, as they age, that they're being served and you're looking after their needs, right? Now we have extremes in the community that, that, that it tends to, to lean towards where you get, you know, kind of mommy's boys where you will just kind of meet the needs of your mom without, uh, you know, neg and neglecting uh, your wife, right? And uh, this is why the Sharia, you know, this is important to study the thick of marriage and divorce and what are the rights of the wife, the rights of the husband, having clarity on that. And, and but making sure that you don't do that, that you don't trample the rights of your spouse at the expense of your mo your mother uh, and then the other way around as well that you don't um that you don't kind of you know be selfish and just have this great kind of uh, time with your with your spouse and then actually your parents are really upset and you're neglecting them and so Sarah I mean, you've had a I think it's good coming from you because you've had this experience of you know living with the, the in-laws and not living with the in-laws so what, 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 what do you yeah share that? I think um so Right now, like I mentioned before, where um, Tushar's mum is living with us, and this is a long-term setup, inshallah. She'll be staying with us for as long as she needs to. 
And I'll be honest, hand on heart, I've not um, always been able to accept that so, um, you know, in, in such a positive way. So in the past, when I was young, I was 19 when I got married, it was hard. And there's been times um, I, I wasn't able to live with the family. And I told to Sean, we were having problems and difficulties. And when we moved out, though, do you remember? We, we it was had actually, to move out. We I moved out. Hack it. But here's the thing. It was really good for their relationship. So I remember they were arguing. I was in the middle of it. And guys, <laughs> you all know there's nothing worse when you got your mum on one side upset <laughs> and your wife on the other. It is awful, right? There's nothing worse. And um, so we did move out. But here's the, here's the thing. When you do something like that for the sake of Allah, Right, you're, you're, you're really doing it for the sake of Allah. You're thinking, this is what's best for my marriage and my children and the, the family overall. They, they got on like a house on fire, started visiting. And then guess what? We, we moved in again, right? Yeah, and so we managed to make it work the second time. We just had that space, time out. Uh, we had that breather. And because we moved away, we, could, we were able to analyze what was it that wasn't working mm. and then um, kind of readdressing that when we moved back in. And so we, we it was, alhamdulillah, you know, we're talking about 20 years. It's been ups and downs mm. um, at different stages. But right now, the way um, it, the reason it works so well is because I know Tushar, um, he won't neglect me. I, I, I trust him. I'm not, I have no fear that my rights are not going to be met. Um, in fact, I sometimes have to remind him that, you know, let's have dinner with mom or let's do something special. Um, and we, just like we have our date night, we also have a family night mm -hmm. where we take our mum and Murad, we all go out together or do something special that she she would enjoy. And there's things with communication, right? So we had to have that discussion. Many people don't do this. We had to have the discussion. I had to talk to my mum. She had to talk to her mum, right? Whenever they're coming, we have to say, look, mum, you know, we're going to spend this time with you, but you know, we'll have dinner together. But look, uh, but after dinner, if you don't mind, we're going to have tea here. This is our couple. You know, we'll, we, obviously you explain it in the way in Urdu, Bengal, whatever. But the point is, you do communicate that, and you know what? They'll, they'll accept it. They'll understand that. Uh, they'll say, oh, yes, yes, uh, yeah, you need your time. But if you don't structure it, if you don't make that time, if you don't discuss it and agree, it won't happen. But also make them feel special as well. So it's not like, oh, we need to have this time together and mm. as if they're not important. Yeah. So um, it's, it's important to include, include them as well. It's, it's, and it can be done discreetly. So often we tend to have our relaxation time in the evening. Mum goes to bed at that time. Yeah. So she's going up anyway. Yeah. And we have night we all have a nice dinner together. I take Murad to sleep. Mum mum goes to her room. And then me and Tushar can have our nice time together. But if I was like, oh no, I want to have dinner together. I don't want mum to be there. Mm. That's just awkward. You can't live in the same house and just yeah. be like, well, I want to eat by myself and they have to eat by themselves. That doesn't work. And I, I don't know exactly where the Sharia comes in, but that's just, you know, when you look at um, it's just about human feelings, like it's not nice that somebody should eat alone. Um, I think it's important that you you see your mother-in-law as a, she's a person. It's not just somebody who's out there to get you. Same with you with um, with my with my mum. Yeah, that transitions into like just basically I want to say very briefly that honouring each other's families, right? Yeah. So having a schedule, making it fair. You know, one month we go to Nottingham to see your family. The next month we go to Preston to see my family. Same with Eid, we split the Eids. Yeah. One Eid we do with um, Tushar's family. One Eid we'll try to do with um, our family. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, um, because we both respect and honor each other's families, it really, it creates a nice bond. So because you show so good to my mom and my family, I want to be good to, to his family yeah. and, and vice versa. Fantastic. Number six, uh, seeking knowledge, right? So in this one, um, the, the, the three, three areas which I, I recommend seeking knowledge in, the first and most important is seeking the knowledge of the sunnah, right? And now this, um, so after you studied the fiqh, you need to study the fiqh of marriage and divorce. Many people, that's going to be a, a you know, uh -oh, I need to do that. Uh, I do you remember we went on our first marriage course, like in the first year of our marriage, and we we were nearly divorced, right? Because we didn't hadn't studied it. And then when we studied the fiqh of divorce, we're like, oh my god, if you, certain phrases can right? yeah. And so you have to study it. It's really important, right? It's a responsibility. Um, secondly, is is studying the sunnah, right? And so. I always grew up with this kind of Asian mentality of, you know, what's a man and, and the man's in charge and, and, and the woman is, has to obey. And, and we all heard the hadiths about this, but the interpretation of that, how that <coughs> manifests, what that looks like is the sunnah. And the sunnah, when you study it, it's so beautiful. And I was shocked when I, when I, when I went, read through the seerah and I read some of the sunnahs of marriage and the way the Prophet Islam was with his wives, how gentle he was, how, how, how much he would laugh, how so much he much, would be... Um, rahma. How much rahma. Yeah. So study the sunnah both ways for men and women. Um, secondly, read the books on marriage. There's some amazing books on marriage. Just, just to mention a few, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Um, uh, any book by the Gottmans, right? This is something which we could talk about in another webinar, but you must get some good quality books on marriage, read them, implement them. 
and also parenting, right? So parenting <laughs> is challenging in our times. Books like Toxic Childhood by Sue Palmer. Collapse um, of Parenting. Collapse of Parenting by Leonard Sachs. Right? You need to read these things because the modern world is so different to when our parents were parenting Sorry, us. Sorry, Peaceful Parents right here. Okay, yeah. right. Dr. Laura Markham. Dr. Laura Markham is amazing. So, so read about parenting, constantly level up, keep learning and be professional about your marriage and about your parenting. I say this a lot, just as you're professional in your work and your career, be professional about your marriage and your parenting, like seek knowledge, level up because the world's complicated and, and society um, is, is pushing against families right now. And so we need to have arm ourselves with knowledge onto how to combat the toxic elements out there so that we can preserve our marriages. Okay, that takes us to our last right. point. We have to finish. So the final point, number seven, it's a lovely one to end on, is prioritize. Prioritize your marriage. And again, if you don't remember anything, remember this. The Prophet Lisa taught us that marriage is half of your religion. Half of your religion. I mean, think about that, right? If something is half of your religion, it's really important. That means your marriage is an ibadah, right? And if you feel guilty about, oh, you know, hanging out with my wife, watching movies with my wife, well, actually, from another hadith, we know that all, all entertainment is... Uh, is barter, right? Is all is all uh, is, is 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 a waste of time. Except three things, and one of you know one of them is about archery and, and and taking care of your horse. And the third thing is fooling around with one spouse, right? So any time you spend with your wife for the sake of Allah, for your with your husband for the sake of Allah, is actually ibadah. And so it's really important. And if something's important, right? Uh, people often give the excuse, "I've got so many children," right? But actually, if you think about it, when you're addicted to something, when you're obsessed to some, uh, with something, no matter what happens in your life, you make time for it. So a few examples. If your um, uh, work. work, work's a classic one, right? I have so many clients who are like, you know, entrepreneurs and uh, workaholics. And look, it doesn't matter if they've got 20 children, five children, two children, right? They've got f five parents, or you can't have five parents, but you know, you've got the parents <laughs> living in your home. Whatever the situation, they'll make time for their work because they are passionate about it, right? You're, you're footballers, guys are into sport. Sports, people are yeah. into sports, people into cooking. You know, there's some women, for example, they love cooking. No matter what happens, no matter how many kids they have, they'll always make brilliant recipes, make massive dishes because they're passionate about cooking. So our message to you is be passionate about your marriage prioritize it, make time for it, and you will be, you'll find creative solutions. And we've had to do this. Syra talked about earlier about, you know, maybe do something in the weekend or do something in think, the day think instead of the, the night. Box. Think outside the box. When you prioritize something, you will think outside the box and you will, you won't, you know, having a no excuse culture that if, you know, and the way we feel is like, it's like food and drink. We have to have time together. We do need to go on a holiday together. We have to, um, uh, you know, make sure we, we have some fun um, and, and uh, make time with the family, right? It, it's, it's a necessity, right? But what happens is if you ignore that for too long, you lose that natural sensitivity and, and you actually don't even feel like making it a priority anymore, right? It doesn't even become an, 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 uh, it doesn't even become an urge anymore. And that's dangerous. That's a sign that you need to start. Things are getting stale. Things are getting stale and you need to work on. And, and this is a lovely um, quote from Stephen Covey. Someone said to him, said that, oh, you know, there's no love in my marriage anymore. Uh, you know, I, I, we don't have, we, we argue all the time. We don't have any common interests. And Covey said to him, he said, well, you need to love your wife. And he says, oh, I don't think you understand. There's no love in this. And he said, don't see love as a noun. See love as a verb. And what do you mean? He says, so love your wife or love your husband. In other words, do the things do yeah. which, which create love, right? Buy gifts, go out together, spend time together. If you do love as a verb, then love as a noun, as a reality, will, will appear in your marriage. And that's what these seven principles are all about, inshallah. It's all about taking the action, taking massive action, and taking the means so that love can develop in your marriage. And inshallah, yeah. that's our final message to you. Um, and uh, we'd just like to say that uh, this, was, this was quite short. We've managed to pack it in 10, 15 minutes. And um, uh, you know, if, if you benefited from this, two, two requests. One, please comment below which of these seven principles or any of these tips, which resonated with you? Just comment below, which one did you resonate with? What are you gonna try after hearing this uh, short video? And two, if you like this, if this is the first time I've done a video with Sarah, we have, we're yeah. both teachers, we've taught together, we've done presentations on other topics. If you'd like to see more of this, maybe a webinar, maybe a course, maybe you know, a podcast, or, I don't know, a Muslim Rick and Judy show, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, just mention it below and you never know, um, it, we might do something like this again. So Jazakul yeah. Khairan from uh, Um Murad, Sarah and myself, uh, we're really honored and please pray for us. We need your du'as. Pray that we have tawfiq and that we have a, a wonderful marriage for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we pray for the whole ummah because mm -hmm. uh, healthy marriages are the basis of a healthy community and then and, and, and society as a whole. And, 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 and inshallah, we, we pray that the whole ummah, that Muslims may lead 
the world in having strong families and communities. Inshallah. Jazakum khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.